<laughs> We've got a downstairs toilet, and it looks like a spa bath. Oh, my goodness. The new tenant is moving in tomorrow, and Judy wants to make sure there's no nasty surprises waiting for him at his new abode. So what I see here first up is drawer handles missing. Oh, my God. Like that, for example. We will get that reattached. We will get the drawer handles put on. And this. Oh, that's sticky. Oh, for God's sake. And also this. It's filthy. No, I'm not happy with that. That's going to have to be cleaned, absolutely. The lounge isn't looking too inviting either. Look at these floors. Look how badly stained they are. These are going to have to be replaced. That is just filth. Sorry, but... And if the new tenant is particularly security conscious, he's going to be in for a nerve-wracking first night. The window latch is broken. Here's another window latch that we'll have to have repaired as well. That's a safety issue. There's a door missing here. Pardon? Well, there's no door here. Possibly it's been damaged by the tenant and they've removed it for whatever reasons, but we have never been told, right? And another chapter in the long-running saga of Prue Morrell versus the Earthquake Commission and insurers. We're off to a property that we've been struggling with for some six and a half years. After years of ongoing assessments, the Earthquake Commission finally agreed the property qualified for an insurance payout. The insurance company came up with a repair strategy with their own assessors. But when the build team brought in couldn't guarantee the success of the procedure, the insurance company wiped their hands of the matter, leaving the landlord high and dry. Here we go. We've got all of this here. So if I get my handy tool, that goes right down. So this whole pad has moved this way. This is the spacious lounge with a bit of indoor-outdoor flow. The base of the house is suffering from two major fault lines at either wing of the property. The cracks go from under this window right the way through under this floor. So you can see a hairline crack only here. And that's also bad news for the walls, which aren't coping without a solid foundation to stand on. And here it is up here. So this whole window is right out of whack now. So they think by jacking and packing that those walls are going to come up fine. Well, they're not. Jacking and packing is the repair procedure the insurance company decided upon, which involves lifting the concrete base and knitting it back together. But the structural engineers brought in to complete the task disagreed, concluding the damage was too much for the procedure to work. The garage is trying to make its way to Kashmir. The lounge is desperately trying to join it. It doesn't want to be left behind. And then we've got the split through the dining kitchen, and that's more trying to go that way. So the whole house, she's buggered. Buggered. Buggered house and bugger all being done about it. Meanwhile, the owner can only watch from his current residence out of town, while his former family home succumbs to the environment. So if this is left in abeyance for another six months, heaven knows what my client will have to contend with. Shocking. Oh, this door handle looks a bit dicey. Back in Whangarei, Judy Morgan is making a last-minute inspection at a house that has something of an open-door policy. There's a door missing here. If it has doors at all. Oh, here we go. Another door missing. <laughs> There's a hole in the ceiling up here. No light bulb and a hole in the wall. One, two, three, four ceiling and five patches to be patched. It's becoming a long list to get through and Judy's ticked off enough as it is. So these tyres are going to have to be removed and the problem with tyres is that it costs money to get rid of them. Shoe, a mop, do you want a broom? It's off a trailer, isn't it? A trail of bits and pieces teases Judy towards the storage space under the house. <laughs> but maybe she should remember to knock next time. We've got a downstairs toilet and it looks like a spa bath. 
Oh my goodness. Judy's not at all happy. If she had known about all this earlier, she could have advertised the property as having two bathrooms. So we'll have to get somebody in here to sort this stuff out. Um, and I'm just, I'll ring the tenant and find out if she owns the bath and the toilet. If she does, she can come and get it. Tires, old bean bags. No broken crap. Look. Oh God, look. Beans everywhere. Unfortunately, there's too much to do for everything to be finished before the new renter moves in tomorrow. It's mainly the carpet issue and behind the stove, that is just diabolical. <laughs> That means work will be ongoing while the new tenant is in situ, which is a less than ideal situ for Judy. It's just basic housekeeping, and unfortunately, some tenants don't have a clue, do not have good basic housekeeping skills. And I think I've said this before, and I'll say it again, perhaps they should teach it in schools. Summit Properties' Vanessa Paklowski is making the most of the glorious Motueka day by heading across town to investigate what appears to be an abandoned tenancy. Garage? Yeah. Hmm. This was a brand new garage, like a virginal garage that had never been touched. Sadly, the garage isn't so innocent now. <laughs> it's a sock. <laughs> Oh, and undies. <laughs> New properties grow up so fast these days. Swap a crate. <laughs> Great day. Mm. Mm. Yucky. And there's even what appears to be some kind of permanent tramp stamp in the hallway. Oh my God. Really? What the hell? Oh, mate. Hmm. I don't think that's going to come up with carpet cleaning. <laughs> That's square, what a weird shape. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Or what might be going on behind door number two. Big reveal on the master bedroom. <gasps> Just stuff. Yeah. Wonder if there's lots of socks in there. <laughs> oh, there's one. <laughs> a sock. <laughs> this is the place where the other sock goes to die. You know how you never know where they go? This is where it's gone. I can guarantee it. Far out. This is just rubbish, I think. Yeah, just old shoes and rubbish. Gold star, she doesn't get that for effort. This is, um, can okay. Only if you don't get too close. Why? Why would you not clean that? Oh, God. Why would you when even the carpet in bedroom number two has been left as is? Hmm, yeah, there's a bit of damage here on the carpet, which is annoying. In fact, it looks like poo. Ooh. Is it poo? Yeah, I don't really want to. When it comes to bathroom habits, the philosophy here seems to have been anything goes. Unless it's a pair of socks. God. But if the runaway tenant thought Vanessa would be surprised... It's kind of what I expected, to be honest. She's sorely mistaken. When this tenant moved in, this house was like schmick. Totally new, beautiful. Since she's been in the tenancy, we've had all the lounge windows replaced because they got smashed. Um, the hob top had to be replaced because that got smashed. Um, and now we've got that big pink stain in the hallway. The next step for us is going to be just getting the cleaners through to clean up. We will probably end up at tenancy tribunal, which is a shame, but with the costs of the cleaning and the gardening and those kinds of things, because it's certainly not reasonably clean and tidy, um, that and with rent arrears is going to mean we'll be filing a claim um, and getting it all back. So there you go. It's much of a muchness outside as well. We'll be getting the gardens weeded and I'll be getting the lawns mowed. This was immaculate, so, yep. Even down to the dirty laundry. And what do you know? where socks go to die. <laughs> in Christchurch, Prue Morell from Good Girls Property Management is involved in yet another earthquake-related stoush with insurers. If this is left in abeyance for another six months, heaven knows what my client will have to contend with. This house was badly damaged in the earthquakes. She's buggered. Buggered. And now the insurance company is refusing to proceed with the owner's claim, 
after structural engineers deemed the insurance company's repair plans unsuitable. Hey, we'll put the jug on. Hey, Pro, how's it going? G'day, Joe. Good to see you. Good to see you. What's in your little yellow box? Well, this here, Prue, this is our zip level. So we take this around the house, um, yep. check all the floor levels. Guy's zip levels show just how uneven the floor surface is. With differences of up to 20 millimetres in just one room, much too uneven for the insurance company's restoration plans to be a complete success. What the main problem is, is the lateral spread. Mm -hmm. So it's not getting the floor back to level. They can do that, but it's the verticality of yeah. the walls and then the lateral spread of the floor. Yes. Um, there's no guarantee when they re-level that the floor's going to close back up. All of which is bad news for the property owner, Ewan. Hello. Back from Finland. Yes. Who was relying on his insurance company to sort all this out before giving the go-ahead for repairs to take place. In your mind, where does it go next to protect your client and this property? And it has to go back to the insurer. Insure, insurance put their hand up and take liabilities mm. and give Ewan back a house that he had like for life. Like there is no dispute between me and Oh, no, no, no. And no, definitely. No. no. Well, I think that the, the, me and the builder are of one accord. Yes. But the same can't be said for Ewan's opinion of his insurers. The earthquake came, of course. You go to your insurer, in my case, say, we were treated as though we were some kind of commercial enemy. Everything we did was met with delaying tactics, uh, bullshit. What I want and need, and what I thought I had been paying premiums for, was to have the house restored, and then I'll sell it or I'll live in it myself. Now, this house isn't an investment property. This is part of me. What I want to happen is for the insurer to do what I believe they signed up to. I want them to observe utmost good faith in their dealings with me, which I have not had. They've had it from me, but it's not the other way. I feel it's greater grist for my mill to proceed and ensure that we get the right result for you. I despair as to how many people are actually going through this in this city. It will likely take some time for the grass to be greener for Ewan, which due to delays in current inactivity, there is now plenty of. But Prue is by no means ready to give up this fight and insists on getting Ewan's insurance company to make good on his policy. I need just to do the right thing and do it well. And at the moment, they're doing neither. In fact, they've blocked all communication. They don't even want to speak to anybody. But of course, I'll give them a call no matter what and flick them a couple of little emails. Judy Morgan is heading back to a property in Romanga for a follow-up inspection after it was recently re-tenanted. Hello. Oh, dear, oh my goodness, look, this is all mail from the previous tenant. But aside from a stack of unopened letters, Judy's happy with what she sees. My first impressions is that it's an 100% improvement on the previous tenant. I'm happy with this. We'll lock up and we'll go downstairs and have a look in, 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 at the exterior of the property. It was under the house that the toilet confrontation took place last time. So when we were here last time, oh my goodness, there was a toilet sitting right there and there was what appeared to be an old spa bath there, so that's gone. The offending appliances have been taken away, but a few new items have taken their place. There's an old clothes dryer there by the looks of it. You know, if and when they move out, they'd have to remove all this stuff. It's not over the top. So the ensuite's gone. <laughs> So that's good. As far as this property goes, we're, we're really quite happy with it. And um, hopefully it will remain that way. Garage. In Montueca, Summit Properties Vanessa Paklowski has been dealing with a house that was abandoned by its previous tenant. This is just rubbish, I think. Yeah. Just old shoes and rubbish. Gold star, she doesn't get that for effort. The property has since been cleaned up, and with a new tenant in situ, Vanessa is keen to check out the clean. Hi, Selena. Hi. How are you? Good. That's good. I'll just take my shoes off. Seeing as we've got nice, clean carpets now. Carpets so clean, 
you can eat your dinner off them. That's come up really well. We had some matching carpets, so we've used that to create a joy in here and just patch the area. And the same goes for the kitchen. Look at this kitchen. So nice. Nice and clean. It's all looking really beautiful, so I'm really happy. It's like a new house, and she's making it a home. The poo's been removed from the loo too. In this bathroom it was pretty gross, and it's just like 10 times better. Selena's a lovely tenant, so she's kept it really good. Thank you, Selena. It's all nice. looking so good, and um, I'll be really um, excited and happy to tell the landlord you settled in well and it's all looking beautiful. So, thank you very much. Okay, so that's really positive. I'm really happy with Selena. She's doing a really good job of looking after the house, which is a relief because obviously my last tenant abandoned, and now we've just got to do our court date for this last rogue that pledged my house, and um, then we'll be all set and uh, we'll have happy landlord, got happy tenants, happy property manager. So it's happy, happy, happy all round. Happiness for everyone but the runaway tenant, who was ordered to pay all rent arrears, cleaning, and gardening costs by the Tenancy Tribunal.